We have ignition of our BE-3 engine and liftoff. Mission Control confirms that New Shepard has cleared the tower and is headed to space. You can see on the lower left side of your screen that we're gaining speed. As New Shepard gains altitude, the atmosphere gets thinner. The graph on the left shows vehicle ascent. Now, we actually started at about 3,700 feet MSL. That's how far above mean sea level we are at launch site one. How exciting, Erica. A great shot there of the PM, the propulsion module, moving away from Earth. That BE-3 engine providing 100% power level. And here shortly, we will approach max Q. This, again, is the point where aerodynamic stress on the vehicle is at its maximum. So the BE-3 engine will throttle back for a little bit as we pierce through the atmosphere. Now that we've passed max Q, BE3 will begin to throttle back up to 100% power level. We'll see that velocity ticker on the left of your screen start to increase more rapidly as the air gets thinner. New Shepard is moving faster and faster. Absolutely. You can also see that engine plume start to expand as we get into that thinner, high upper atmosphere. Such a cool shot there. So just over two minutes of boost for the BE-3 engine before we reach the next stage of our mission, MECO, main engine cutoff. That will be the next milestone we'll see. New Shepard continues to climb 145,000 feet There it is, main engine cutoff, just over 2,200 miles per hour and soon vehicle separation. Always love seeing us coast through Miko. Now when the vehicles separate and the crew capsule from the booster, uh, we're going to be entering that phase of microgravity. And you can see that zero G indicator at the bottom of your screen. This is really where most of our payloads are getting into the core of their science mission. Oh, what a fantastic view. All sorts of cool experiments here enabled in microgravity in free fall. Items don't sink or float. Hot air doesn't rise. Plants and cells respond to this novel stimulus with different patterns of gene expression, which gives us new insights for agricultural technologies and medicine. And yeah, we talked earlier about the importance of fluid physics because fluid flow on the ground dominated by gravity, the liquid at the bottom of your cup, but in space it's dominated by surface tension, which leads to all sorts of cool effects with capillary action. Uh, and these effects are relevant for everything from drinking coffee to refueling satellites to the microfluidics in your medical diagnostics. Incredible. And I'm sure the payloads are enjoying all of the clean, very clean microgravity data that they're collecting at this time. Loving that view back down on the clouds over West Texas. Now, if you watch that ticker on the lower left corner, you see we are slowly counting down in our velocity to zero. That's the vertical velocity of the system. And when we reach zero, that's when we've reached Apogee. And fantastic. Capsule pausing in its upward journey just momentarily. Apogee for the capsule at 351,247 feet, well into space and over the Kármán line. Fantastic mission for our payloads on board today. And Erica, so now we've got both vehicles racing back down to Earth under the effect of gravity. The gumdrop shape here of the crew capsule will mean a slower return for the crew capsule, but there on the left, a great view of the propulsion module returning back to the West Texas desert. It's 
So as we come back down and the atmosphere begins to get thicker again, we start to have the ability to use our aerodynamic control surfaces. Uh, what you'll be seeing next is the air brakes deploying. This is a critical step in slowing the vehicle down, increasing the surface area, just like a badminton shuttlecock or you know, something that's uh, helping you to come down through the, through the upper atmosphere. We're going to see that the velocity starts to decrease with those air brakes out. In fact, the drag brakes should cut the velocity in about half. So we'll be looking for that, uh, picking up hopefully with the cameras, the long range cameras and seeing those drag brakes deploy as the propulsion module cuts through the atmosphere. And those are the forward fins deploying there on the right, a great view looking up from the propulsion module into space and seeing those forward fins deploying. You can see the capsule passing by just there on the right hand screen well above the booster at this altitude. What a great video shot. I love seeing this. Those are our experiments, our customers today, getting their microgravity data in. So that booster coming in at about Mach 3, uh, pulling at about 5 Gs as it re-enters the atmosphere, so we're gonna be seeing that, that uh, velocity decrease rapidly at this point. And this is one of my favorite parts of observing a mission from West Texas. Those are the drag brakes, there they are deployed. And we see those aft fins steering the booster over the landing pad. Yeah, if you're in West Texas, you may be hearing a sonic boom uh, coming up here as we break through the sound barrier. BE-3 engine relight, just 2,000 feet to go before the landing pad. Landing gear deploying. Oh, love that shot. I can't tell you how many people have told us they thought that this looks like uh, CGI, but indeed one of these most beautiful sh shots in the West Texas desert. We have booster touchdown. Congratulations, New Shepard propulsion module and the BE-3 engine for providing just the right feathered thrust to come in for the nice hovering land. And again, that's the ninth flight for this booster, really showing the, the operational reusability of this system and how many times we can get back to space. Well, Erica, we've just <laughs> safely landed the booster. Now we're about to watch the crew capsule make its final descent back to the West Texas desert. In parallel, the team will vent the propellants, any remaining propellants from the propulsion module and begin safe recovery operations so that we can prepare it for its next mission. You know, these shots are incredible. We've got the Sierra Diablo Mountains in the background, um, some yuccas and some choyas, and of course, a world-class <laughs> propulsion module booster on a landing pad. This is awesome. Yeah, it's a pleasantly toasty marshmallow having come right back from space. I absolutely love being out in the desert and just standing next to a rocket that just that morning flew up to space and back. Absolutely amazing. And the thermal protection system. Oh, there we go. We've got main parachutes, three main parachutes on the crew capsule as it makes its descent back from space to Earth. Those parachutes reefed when they're first uh, let out and then expanding to their full diameter. Now, the parachutes are essential in providing a, a gentle touchdown for the crew capsule, but we also have a retro thrust system on the bottom of the capsule that makes that landing even smoother. So as we're coming down, nice slow velocity, right around 1600 feet, we're gonna be looking for that retro thrust system as we get closer to the desert floor. And Erica, this retro thrust system is effectively high pressure gas um, that is fired off to make a cushion of air, a uh, soft landing for the crew capsule, but it kicks up some dust. Such gorgeous scenery, such a gorgeous crew capsule. And uh, again, those parachutes doing their job, taking us down to just about 15 miles per hour. 
the retro thrust system will take us down to just one or two miles an hour as we get down to the, the base of the desert floor. There it is, touchdown for NS24 and our 33 customers and 38,000 postcards. What a journey. Special thank you to all of our customers flying important science and education on board today, especially to all the students who designed and built experiments. Want to shout out uh, to our friends out at MIT, the University of Central Florida, PS185 in Brooklyn. AIAA, ASTSR, our sponsors at NASA. So many cool things going on on board today. On board today, there on the capsule. Yeah, no, you inspire us every day. Thank you for being our customers. If we could just do a quick recap here, Erica, it looked like a nominal boost for the propulsion module and crew capsule combined. Some hypergravity there for our payloads, and then a clean separation. Over 180 seconds of clean microgravity for our payload customers and two vehicles appearing to land nominally here back in West Texas. I would call this the best day uh, at work for me. This always, is awesome. Always love launch days, Eddie. Just, uh, it brings a smile to everybody's face. Um, if what you saw here today inspired you, please come help us build a road to space. We have hundreds of positions open across all our facilities and have a particular need for machinists and programmers in Florida and Alabama. Please visit our website for more details. And of course, if you'd like to purchase a seat on New Shepard, you can go to blueorigin.com, click the fly to space button in the upper right hand corner. Following a thorough review of today's mission, we look forward to flying our next crewed flight soon. My name is Erica Wagner for Salt Flat Eddie and everybody here at Blue Origin. Thanks for tuning in to New Shepard's 24th flight. Happy holidays and Granatum Ferocitor.